you can't be tired. Your greatness cannot be tired. In the mighty name of Jesus. I was speaking briefly on a topic that the Holy Spirit led in my spirit to share with us. Great, but tired. Great, but tired. But that greatness tonight, God have already loosened it. They can't remain tied anymore. Can I hear a better amen? Please, I don't want anybody to sleep a few minutes I was speaking right now. I don't want to be speaking, you know, pouring water on a stone. Are you getting what I'm saying? Great, but tired. Greatness is like a seed that God has planted in the life of each and every one of us. Why? Because it's he created us to be great. God has a great plan for man. And that's why he planted the seed of greatness inside the heart of a man. But unfortunately, some greatness of many people have been tied down. Either by hostile environment or by diabolical power or by circumstances or by family background. I often tell people that you should not allow your background to put your back on the ground. Because where you are coming from cannot determine the height where you will go tomorrow. Because God will remain your source. You never chose to be a man, but God made you one. You never chose to be a woman, but God made you a woman. How do I know? John chapter 15 verse 16 says, You have not chosen me, but I chose you. And ordained you that you might go forth and bear fruit, and that your fruit will remain. Then ask me whatsoever you ask of the Father, and he will do it unto you. That suggests to me that whom we are today is not out of our decision. God do not consult any man before he made it. God do not consult any woman before he made it. He took a decision by himself. He makes some people to be wonderfully made. He makes some people to be wonderful. And some are fearful. He says some people that their face, when you look at it, you become afraid. That is the fearful time. Get what I'm saying? Fearful and wonderfully made. But all of them... And made, and made by who? By, who? by God. God. Man. God deposits a lot in a man. And that's why God will always be interested. And that's why God can never be complete. As mighty as he is without man. And that's why God Always use man as an instrument to accomplish his plan and purpose to humanity. He planted a lot inside of us. But the problem we have, our inability to discover the potentiality that God has deposited in us. But today, heaven we open your eyes to discover the greatness inside of you. And anyone that his greatness has been taught, that person must be liberated today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Great, but tired. Judges chapter 11, let's be on the first line. Judges chapter 11, reading from verse 1. Judges chapter 11, reading from verse 1. Are you there with me? The book of Judges chapter 11, I want to be on the first line. Now Jephthah declared that it was a mighty man of valor. And he was the son of an harlot. And a Gilead begat Jephthah. And a Gilead wife bear him sons. And his wife's sons grew up and they thrust him out. Jephthah and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art what the son of a strange woman. You are 
He is a son of a strange woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwell in the land of war. Two. And there we are gathered fair men to Jephthah and went out with him. And it came to pass at the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. And they said unto Jephthah, Come, be our captain, that we may fight with war the children of Ammon. Verse 7. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did not he hate me and the expel me out of my father's house and why are ye come unto me now when ye are in distress and the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah therefore we turn again to thee now that thou mayest go with us and a fight against the children of Ammon and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead and Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead if you bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be witness between us, if we do not so according to thy words. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him the head and the captain over them and Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in misbeh. May God bless the reading of his word and bring back interpretation to us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This was a story of a young man in the scripture called Jephthah and the man called Gilead, his father. That has other children and has one. But the story of Jephthah becomes so interesting. Because anything that God wants to bless a generation, he will look for a family. And inside that family he will single out one person. Separate that person from the loins of his father and the poor is special oil upon his head and make him to be special among all. I believe such person is in the house today. For heaven will walk into your house, into your father's house, you will be the one that will be selected. Can I have an amen in the house? Jephthah was not the most educated in the family. Jephthah was not the most handsome in the family. But the situation that is connected to the life of Jephthah was what spotted him out. It spotted him out. What was the situation? The situation is that his own mother is a harlot. It's a street hall. It's a woman that everybody knows that is a notorious you know, harlot. Many people don't want to identify with her because of the kind of life that she lives. But Jephthah don't have that kind of life. Jephthah was not wayward. Jephthah is a decent young man. But his, his background was a problem to him. Anytime that his mates want to address him, they will address him with characteristics of the mother. I said, close your mouth, you're supposed not to be speaking. When the legitimate sons are speaking, you are a son of a strange woman, a son of a halo. The reason for this world is to demoralize him, to make him to look so inferior before his age men. This thing has happened many years in the life of Jephthah. Every day is for the teeth, but one day is for the owner of the house. They have been intimidating him, saying no manner of thing against him. I don't know the type they are saying against him. 
even in the family where you are coming from, even in the company where you are living, they say all manner of things that is not even connected to your destiny. But because of the circumstances or the family background, they gave you such names and I call you all manner of things. That was the situation of Jephthah. One day, it is no more the people outside speaking against Jephthah, but his own brethren, the same family, the same son, the same father, and said, this guy, when we are talking, you should not be talking because your mom is what? A harlot, a strange woman. And one day they took a decision to do what? To throw him out. I don't know the decision they have taken in the secret places against you. But that decision, through that decision, heaven will raise you up. I don't like your amen. I say heaven will raise you up. Through that their negative decision, heaven will raise you up. They took a decision to disinherit him of his inheritance. What the enemy is after is to disinherit you of your inheritance. They say you will not inherit in our father's house. That is their target. What's supposed to come to him? They want to do what they want to take it. No wonder the Bible says in John chapter 10 verse 10. What did he say there? The thief come but not but to do what? To steal, to kill, and to do what? And to destroy. But he has come to do what? To give us life and a life in abundance. The target of the enemy is to steal your inheritance. But they will not succeed. I said they will not succeed. They try it to Jephthah. And they conspired against him. Conspiracy didn't start today. It has started long ago. Time immemorial. And they conspired themselves together. In the same family. What was their conspiracy? Let us disinherit this our brother. His inheritance. By doing what? By throwing him out. Every gathering anywhere to disinherit you, heaven will scatter them. To disinherit it, but no problem. What happened? They threw him out. And a young man landed in one village called Tho. I call it a city of no communication. It doesn't matter how powerful your phone is. There are some village you will enter. That phone will become useless in your hand. Because you are not going to make use of it. You are not going to get connected. He found himself there. They thought that his own. If we throw him inside the village called Tho. That his own has finished. Like some people have concluded that your own have finished. But your own have not finished. This is just the beginning of what God is about to do. And no devil from the pit of hell will stop you getting to the place you're supposed to get to. If you believe that, can I have an amen from you? Jephthah found himself there. The Bible said, there he gathered the vain men. Vain men are unprofitable men. Down in the street. A magnet will always attract something. There is something in who? In Jephthah that is attracting, you know, those people. To do what? To transform them. He gathered them to do what? To transform them. And they gathered because he's a man of knowledge who believe that the seed of greatness in him do die for some time but cannot die. He believe it. One day something happened. Do you know what happened? One day war broke up against the land of Gilead. Who caused the war? Anytime that God wants to promote whosoever he wants to promote, he will create one situation for the lifting of that person. Anytime, if there is no situation, if there is no opportunity for God to do what he wants to do, he will create one. Suddenly, war started. Who caused the war? Nobody can explain. About 20 cities Rise up against Gilead and say, We are going to finish that. God allowed that situation, allowed that circumstances because somebody is about to be favored, somebody is about to be singled out 
from the family of Gilead to be announced. And God allowed that 20 cities to rise up against them. But do you know that in that land of Gilead, there are trained warriors, there are trained soldiers, there are trained military men who can fight any battle and know the right weapon to use to fight the battle. But they could not fight this one. Anyone that come closer, they say we can handle it. All the captains, all the chief of army stars, all the people that you know that know how to handle the armory, they could not. They said, but there is one young man that was thrown out. Bible never recorded to us before now that that guy is a trained soldier. There is no place. But there is something in him that heaven has planted. Listen to me, child of God. There is something in you that is not in another person. And that is what makes you to be unique from everybody. One day I took time and I opened the palms of my children. I have five of them. Three girls and two boys. And I was looking at their palm. I discovered what is written about me is different from what is written about them. I get, I get back to them. The same blood. But destiny, destiny differs. differs. What, what I'm destined, destined to fulfill is different from theirs. Yes. It, doesn't it doesn't matter how I try to subject them to do what I like. There is something God put in them that is not in me. And that is what makes every one of us to be unique. And that's why, oh, according to the present statistics of men and women that are in the world, we're over 7.7 .7 billion people all over the globe. If we put our top print, it can never be the same. God makes every one of us to be unique. That is the greatness of God. That is the how mighty God is. But you have to discover that there is something in you that is not in another person. You're not to eat. And hold it tight. Because that is the channel in which God is going to raise you up. Jephthah knew that. And he was not intimidated that they put me in the village. He just said, and I said that I'm just on a transit. <laughs> when you're on a transit, it doesn't matter how many hours you spend on the transit. You have not gotten to your what? Final destination. You are still on transit. He believed that that place is not the final bus stop. Situations and circumstances might have relegated me to a background. But that is not my end. That is not my end. That is not my end. It is not my end. It is not your end. He believed it. What you need to do is to keep your faith alive. And keep moving. And that's why my hashtag says, don't stop digging the well until you find water. If you didn't find it here, you go another place and dig. If there is no water there, you go another place. You must get water because God is the one who deposited water right in the deep. But it will take a man of God and focus to be able to dig until water comes out. You will not stop on the way. I don't like your amen. I say you will not stop on the way. Nothing will stop you until you get to where you are going. If your amen is louder, may God give you the desires of your heart. Jephthah refused to give up. And the war broke up. That war that broke up is for the lifting of Jephthah. And the young man was very, very sensitive to understand time. Another important thing you need to know is to be sensitive when the time for your lifting comes so that you cannot mesmerize it. He was sensitive. When they have exhausted everything they know how to do to fight the 20 cities, they begin to look for a man called Jephthah. They will look for you. I don't like that you're here, man. I said they will look for you. Amen. Why must they look for you? Because there is something you are carrying that another person is not carrying. They will look for you. They will look for you. 
they will look for you. I keep hearing the word that said they will look for you. And suddenly, the people that conspired against Jephthah become his campaign team. Conspirators become the campaign team. They begin to gather themselves together. Let's go and look for this guy. <laughs> And even the elders of the land agree with them. And at the end of everything, they landed in the village, called home, and they were looking for a man called Jephthah. And Jephthah appeared because he knew that the hour for his lifting has come. He was sensitive enough to understand that this time I must not miss it. I hear the Spirit of God saying to me, You will not miss your target. I don't like your amen. I say you will not miss your target. You will not miss your target. In the name of Jesus Christ. He was sensitive to understand. And he looked at, he, he, he look at them. He said, you know the question that he asked? He said, why have thou come to look for me in the time of your distress? Why have thou come to look for me in the time of your distress? He crossed his leg. <laughs> Why? And they begin to narrate their story and their ordeal. And I say, 20 nations are rising up against us, and a lot of things are happening against us, and nobody could fight the war. Except you, we have found out that there is something in you that is not in anybody in this city. As a whole. We want you to return back and do what? And fight the battle for us. I love the young man very well. He was not asking for the inheritance from his father's house alone. But he was asking to be the head of all of them in the whole city. He was not asking for small things. A pastor that was struggling somewhere had an opportunity to meet with the Dr. Olukoya, General Vasi of Mountain of Fire Ministries. And after narrating all the stories about his, you know, or dealing ministries and all the challenges, and the man gave him an open check. I said to him, what do you want me to do for you? You know what he asked? He asked for 70,000. I said, fire! Seventy thousand. Can he rent one room, ordinary room or not? Not self con. Just one room in Lagos. It is not possible. And I said, go to the cashier, and I gave him. He still struggling. He gave you an open church of that kind of man. Tell you what you want after you talk your stories. And you are demanding for only 70,000 naira. Not to $70,000. I said, let me have that kind of opportunity. I will give him beer. He will use his hand to reduce it to the one that at least will be suitable for me to live a good life. The young man was not sensitive to understand that the time for his lifting has come. He went and asked for cheap things. Jephthah was not asking for cheap things. Jephthah asked for me to become captain over all of you. You will unseat that man that he said that is the head. He will dethrone him. I will be the one that will say to him, say, yes, sir. We agree. He was not asking for small things. Okay, look at the case of Abraham. Abraham had been believing God for work. You know, the fruit of the womb. Even when he's very, very old in age. But one day, God packaged the three personalities. We had them that are the cloth. The Bible said they are like men from a far country. Everywhere is filled with dogs. If you look at them, there is nothing to desire of them. But when Abraham saw 
astonishment. The Bible says, at the heat of the day, he was at the tent. Suddenly, this man, he saw them at the tent door. He ran after them. Because he was spiritually sensitive to understand that these men are not ordinary men. He was sensitive to understand that the hour for his lifting has come. He ran after them. Listen to me. There are people you run to. There are people you run away from. You run to them. He was sensitive because you don't run you know, to a man who is not carrying anything. And he welcomed them into the tent. And the first thing, make their body to cook and begin to make a lot of sacrifices to them after they have eaten. Three of them, all, after they have eaten, he said, according to the hour of life, I will return. They are three, but now in singular. I will return. It, it didn't say we we. <laughs> then you will know that God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit just appear in their personality. But a man who we are very spiritually sensitive understood that these men were not ordinary men. And that is what kept him. And that is how Abraham became the father of many nations. Even when Sarah laughed, he said, your laughter cannot change what God has signed. It doesn't matter. I tell people that faith is a, a, a driver that gets you to the point for God to take over. When God takes over, your faith is irrelevant. Yeah. He's a driver. Once God takes over, whether you have faith, you don't have it. You have already taken over. So your faith becomes irrelevant. He, she laughed, does not stop the dead womb from do what? Conceiving. From monopause to what? To nonopause. Nonopause. <laughs> Praise God. Now, in rounding up this message, I want you to understand something. He said, will I rule over you? He said, yes, sir. I will, will, will be your captain. You will be our captain. Just sign. He said, sign it. You know what happened to Jacob and Esau? When the guy was hungry, he said, he said, he said give me that porridge. He said, hey, before you will finish eating and the thing clear in your eyes, you come to ask for what you have given out. Sign it. And they enter into a covenant, a sign. And that is how he sold his bad right. He says, oh yes, sign. And a sign. And a Jephthah say, a deed with you is, I will be the captain of all of you. Sign, sign, sign and say, everybody, that is your deal. Jephthah moved and go to God. And I say, a deal with God. You know the deal that Jephthah had with God? That you will lead me to fight these 20 cities. And anyone that will come out of first from my house when I have destroyed those cities and return back, I will use it as a sacrifice upon your order. And God who understands the heart of a man, who knows, the Bible says God weighs the heart. He knew the heart of Jephthah. That Jephthah is a man when he takes a decision. He doesn't look back. You know, sometimes in the church, somebody will say, Holy God knows my heart. But you know that you are lying. It is very clear to you. He said, God knows. What did God know? He knows that you are a liar. He knows what you are saying is not true. He knows that you will not do it. Only God knows. You are trying to deceive men, but you can't deceive God. He weighs the heart. He understands the intent of man's heart. The one that you are about to think, you have already knows it. He knows that Jephthah will not disappoint him. He said, I will lead this guy to this war. I will be with him. But do you know that when he has gone and returned him back, Jephthah never believed that Jephthah had only one daughter. That is the only child that he had. 
He thought that other servants and other people will come out from the house to come and greet him. He never knew. He's the least expected to be the first to come out when somebody is coming in into the house. But suddenly, as he was returning victoriously and with joy, the only daughter rushed out. And he shouted! In agony, and he was annoyed over it. Why must he be this one? But he said, I have given out my word. I have entered into a covenant with God. I will not look back. And the daughter said that, just relax. Give me a few days to go and enjoy with my friends. And I will return back and you put me at the altar of sacrifice and sacrifice me to God. Is it the children of this generation? It is not possible. When we were 25 years old, huh? we, what we don't know, the people of this generation of 10 years, 8 years know it. At my own time. Let me enjoy it small, just a few days. And return, he was sacrificed. He was, I've been suspecting this, my father. No wonder. He's a ritualist. He's in his head. They will use me for sacrifice. Was I there when you enter covenant with you? He will not even mention God. He said, This one is a ritualist. They want to use my head. He will take off. And they will never return back. As you have heard this word today, great for time, but through opportunity God created, untie the greatness of Jephthah and make him a voice. And when he made that sacrifice to the Lord, he become a liberation and total emancipation of the whole land of Gilead. Because one man was raised by God. The greatness that had been tied down many years ago by a family background was raised again. I don't know how many years you have been down, but this vigil, this opportunity, this night will be the time of your rising. I said, will be the time of your rising. Shall we be upstanding? Shall we stand up on our feet? Great, but I want to pray for you right now before I drop this mic. There are factors that can tie greatness. Circumstances, family background, bad company, hostile environment, or diabolical powers. Greatness is a seed that God has planted in every one, but some tears are tied. That is devil's plan. Jephthah, as example, carried the seed of greatness in him but was tied by family background, subjected to hard life, full of struggle, until situation that brought freedom to him and to the entire land of Gilead come. And he maximized the opportunity by sacrificing the only daughter that he had for the freedom of all. You can't remain like this after this night. Because that your greatness will never remain tied anymore. The seed that is planted inside of you, which is called greatness, will lift you up. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ.